Elizabeth Amy Dillwyn, or Amy Dillwyn as she was known, was an industrialist, novelist, businesswoman and social benefactor. Born in Park Wren, Gower Road, Sketty, Swansea on the 16th May 1845, she was one of the first female industrialists in Britain. The daughter of Lewis Llewellyn Dillwyn and Elizabeth, née Delabesh. One of four children, her oldest sister, Mary, was born in 1839. Rodney was born in 1843 and younger sister Sarah was born in 1852. Her uncle was John Dillwyn Llewellyn of Pentlegare, who, along with his wife Emma Tomlinson Talbot, his sister, Amy's aunt, Mary Dillwyn, and his daughter, Amy's cousin, Teresa Story Maskellin, née Dillwyn Llewellyn, were pioneers of early photography. Her paternal grandfather was the naturalist Lewis Weston Dillwyn, and her maternal grandfather was geologist Henry Dalabesh. The Dillwyn family were originally Quakers, and her great-grandfather was William Dillwyn, the anti-slavery campaigner from Pennsylvania, USA, returned to the UK to campaign in Britain. Her father was a Liberal MP between the years 1855 to 1892, and he was the owner of the Dillwyn works at Havard, Swansea. In February 1864, her fiancé, Llewellyn Thomas of Llewellyn Madog, died of smallpox shortly before their wedding. When her mother died in 1866, Amy, now 20, became the mistress of Hendra Foyland House, which she reluctantly accepted. She had no experience to do this, but she soon got to grips with running such a large household, even dealing with the quarrelling servants. She also acted as her father's companion in many of his engagements in Swansea and London. In 1866, she received a message saying that people who lived by the commercial inn, Calais, were suffering from cholera. So she went into the village, visiting the ill people and gave them beef tea, chicken broth and jelly. And against the advice of the local doctor, she fed the ill people herself. She then went to Sketty to see an elderly lady, Betsy Lewis, who was suffering from typhoid. Amy gave her beef tea and barley water. The lady was also in debt to a clothing club run by local women who wanted her removed from the list. But Amy made sure she was kept on the list and even took her an orange to eat, which, of course, was a rare fruit at the time. A few months later, Amy visited a Mrs. Isaacs. Mrs. Isaacs' daughter's baby had just died and Amy went into the kitchen of the house where the baby lay on the kitchen table. Amy was able to console and offer her sympathies to Mrs. Isaacs who said that the visit of Amy had made her feel better. Amy Dillwyn was also a competent and skilled writer publishing seven novels and a handful of short stories and poems. She was a regular reviewer of The Spectator and a contributor to the periodical The Red Dragon, the national magazine of Wales. Her first novel was The Rebecca Rioter, The Story of Calais Life. Her second novel, Chloe Arguel in 1881, was a satire of the ruling class. In 1883, she published A Burglary or Unconscious Influence. Her fourth novel, Jill, published in 1884, was a commercial success. She then wrote Jill and Jack in 1887. Nant Ulfer appeared in the Red Dragon National Magazine of Wales and she published Maggie Steele's Diary in 1892. Following the deaths of her brother in 1890 and her father in 1892, she lost the family home in Hendrefoylan due to it going to the male line in accordance with the custom at the time. At the funeral of her father, she wore a bright purple skirt with a yellow rose in her belt and flowers in her hat, making a statement against the Victorian conventions of elaborate funerals, which could cause families to get into debt by buying mourning clothing. Amy Dillon was evicted from Hendra Foylan and she moved into lodgings at West Cross, Swansea. She did inherit her father's spelter business, but also inherited the debt that came with it, which was over £100,000. 
Amy was determined to save the works and also keep the 300 workers in employment. To do this, she lived on the minimum of wages and worked hard for four years and eventually paid off her father's debts and her works thrived. She was now able to move from her lodgings and brought a house called Teague Lynn, Mumbles Road, West Cross. In 1905, she sold her works to a German company and made a profit. She was involved in many civic roles in Swansea, organising committee of the National Eisteddfod held at Swansea in 1906, chairman of the hospital board, supporter of the Militant Women's Freedom League. When the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies was formed at the turn of the century, Amy Dillwyn joined as one of the earlier supporters in Wales. She campaigned in support of dressmakers of Ben Evans store Swansea, who went on strike in 1911. Amy Dillwyn was also active in liberal politics well into her 80s. She was known for her somewhat unconventional clothing and often seen smoking a cigar and wearing a trilby hat, her mark of her own individuality. She died in Swansea on 13th December 1935 at the age of 90. She was cremated in Pontiff Preed and her ashes laid to rest in the churchyard at St Paul's Church, Sketty, Swansea, next to her parents and her brother Harry. Her house, Teague Lynn, still stands on Mumbles Road, West Cross, and on its boundary wall there is a blue plaque dedicated to Amy Dillwyn. <laughs>